In this video, I will show you how to create a shared contact list in SharePoint for Office 365, which was inspired by InfiniteConsulting.com in the post shown here. Let's take a look. The first step is to create the app. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to Settings and choose Add an App. We can either search for and or scroll down and locate the contact type. I'll go ahead and click on contacts. I'll click on advanced options in the lower left to see the choices that we have. We have a choice to name it and give a brief description. Simply click on Create and be patient and it will build your new contact list. Once your contact list is loaded, then we have an opportunity, of course, we'll add some samples. I'll go ahead and add a record. You can fill out as much or as little as you'd like. When you've filled everything out, you can either click Save at the bottom or you may click Save in the Edit ribbon. Either way would be equally fine. Next, we need to set permissions. We need to decide who we plan to share this with. There are several ways to get to the security and permissions of an individual list. One of those is to go to the List tab in the Settings group, and we can either choose List Settings or Shared With. I'm going to go to List Settings. And in the middle column, third one down, permissions for this list. I'm informed that this list inherits its permissions from its parent. If I'm okay with that, we're all set. However, if I'd like to limit the audience and or add to the audience of whom I'd like to share this list with, we simply stop the inheritance, permissions, inheritance group, and click upon stop inheriting permissions. We need to then confirm the message. You are about to create unique permissions for this list. Changes made to the parent site will no longer affect this list. I'm OK with that. I'm going to click OK. And I now have an opportunity to remove some of the groups that I wish to not share with. So I chose my visitors and Excel service viewers. And I'm going to remove them from the permission list. I'm now left with anyone who's part of my site members or site owners group. And that's all right. That's all I needed. I would have also had an opportunity to grant permissions, type in the names of the individuals or groups that I'd like to add, send them a message, and decide at what level I want them to interact with my contact list. We'll go ahead and cancel at this point as I don't really want to add anyone else. Then we will browse back to our settings and back to our contact list. The next step is to share this list through Outlook. We'll go ahead and click upon the List tab. And in the Connect and Export group, click on Connect to Outlook you're going to be presented with several caution and warning dialog boxes. I'm going to go ahead and allow. Outlook is then opened and then Outlook is doing me the courtesy of saying, are you absolutely sure you want to share this contact list or do I want to invite this contact list into my Outlook? I am sure. I'm going to go ahead and click yes. I'm now presented with my contacts in my Outlook and I can now opt to view all the pertinent information about the individuals. Um, we can look at their phone information. All the different views that we have available are going to then apply to the individuals that we have in our contact list. This is a great way to keep a list of individuals that we wish to share with our coworkers. We have the one original source we keep it up to date and we share it out with others through their outlook. 
It is very important, of course, to make sure we have the proper permissions. And thanks again, Infinite Consulting, for inspiring this video. Please check out other posts at their website shown below.